Okay everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam. Today we're in Bayshore, Long Island. We're gonna be talking about the case of Katie Beers, the nine-year-old that was abducted and put into a concrete bunker. All right, let's flip this around and get into it. All right, follow me on Instagram, at Mooney Dashcam, I post it every day. Also, don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. That's how I got the idea for this video, it was left in my comments. Okay, the address that we're going to is 1416 Saxon Avenue. I mentioned we're in Bayshore before. We're talking about Katie Beers. So two days before her 10th birthday, she goes missing. No one knows where she could be or where to turn, especially since her family, she had a very rough family life and there were custody battles over her. So it was possible that one of the adults took her. It's pretty common when, when a custody thing's going on. Then a message was left to her godmother, her godmother's answering machine, that said, I've been kidnapped by a man with a knife. It was eventually traced, the phone call, to a payphone by the Spaceplex Amusement Park slash Arcade in Wisconsin, Long Island. I'll show you what that looks like. Spaceplex Family Entertainment Center is a special place for special events or individual family fun. Clean, safe, friendly environment. Let's take a look at our facility. At Spaceplex, you can ride motorcycles, drive racing cars, fight monsters, shoot baskets, or even ride a dinosaur. The kid comes out in everyone. Later on, the police realized that it was a recording and she was never actually there. Little did they know, it was all closer than they thought. Their family friend and neighbor, John Esposito, a 43-year-old. Oh, good looking out. I thought they might have had a stop sign, but I stopped just in case. A 43-year-old who's very close to the family. Got them gifts and stuff. He was, he was close with the family. He did work on his house a few years ago, making a pile of dirt that the neighborhood kids would all play on. Not knowing that he was actually building an underground bunker specifically for Katie. A concrete underground bunker that had a bed, a TV, video games, and a toilet, and a chain to keep her restrained. Also had a CCTV that broadcasted a video that was from the main house so she could see what was going on in the main house very odd it was like under a bookshelf that had to be unbolted um under a 200 pound piece of concrete it had to be lifted up i have all the pictures of that very very creepy stuff i'm actually creeped out driving around this neighborhood talking about this story i'll be honest it was a six by seven foot concrete room under his um garage extension on his house and that's exactly where she was. She was constantly watching the news because she was able to watch TV in there. And then eventually, she was smart. She was, she's was she been through a lot, we'll get into that. She started to play mind games with Esposito, constantly asking him questions about the future, like making him second guess his whole decision. Um, where, how would she go to school? How would she work? How would she eventually get married and have kids? And his answers to that were, he would teach her everything she would ever need to know. He had enough money to pay for the both of them. And that once she turned 18, they would get married and have kids, the two of them. Disgusting guy, disgusting guy. I can't even get over how much I hate this guy. Um, once the cops found out that Esposito, a few years back, was arrested for abducting a 12-year-old boy, they really, really put the pressure on him couple blocks away here from the house. You guys are lucky to get to skip past all these red lights. So he's getting questioned and he tries to say that he brought her to the Spaceplex that day and she got kidnapped from there, from the Spaceplex, which obviously he went with the tape recording of her voice to the Spaceplex and played it through the payphone for, for the future reference. If he got questioned, he could say that. Like she was there. 
but the police already saw through that, and uh, he was about to be caught. After 18 hours of questioning and 17 days of Katie being locked up, he finally confesses on January 13th. The cops go to the spot, lift up the door, get her out of there. She's very scared in there. They get her out. They reassure her that everything's okay. We're about a block and a half away from the house now. Then they realize, after they get her out, that she had a super rough upbringing. She was neglected by her mother, so she lived with her godmother. And the godmother's husband physically and sexually assaulted her. It's terrible. Terrible that this happened. She was put into foster care, taken by a foster family in East Hampton. Which, if you guys know the area, East Hampton is a very rich part of Long Island. Okay, you know what? I actually have to find this specific address. They might have changed the address to the house because they do that sometimes with big crime areas because I drove past and it skips over 1416 Saxon. Okay, but she goes to a foster family in East Hampton, a nice couple with four kids, and she went on to have a great life after that. She went to college right now. She is married with a husband and two kids. So I'll get back to you in one second and we'll find the exact address. I'm, I'm about a house or two away here. Okay, so it's not this house to the right. It is the next one up. Not this one. This one, apparently. I don't think that's right for some reason. It's a very small house when you look... All right, I'm not staying out here long at all. It's very late at night, it's almost midnight. And this is the creepiest thing that you could do at this hour. I guess this whole house was rebuilt and built up. I'm not exactly sure because, say hi to the truck by the way, because when you see pictures of the thing being dug up, the underground bunker, the house looks much smaller. So I feel like it might possibly be the next house over, but I don't know. This is 1410. It's 1416 that we're looking for. We'll go back to the truck and finish up the story. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm creeped out in this area. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Yes, you did hear me right. It's almost midnight. It's 11.40 p.m. right now. All right, continuing on with the story. July 27th, 1994, he was sentenced to 15 years to life. He ended up dying September 4th, 2013 of natural causes. Um, Katie said that she was sexually abused during the whole thing. He never ended up getting charged for that because he died before he was able to be charged. He died right before his 20-year 20, 20 parole um, hearing coming up, which, good, he was probably never going to get out anyway, due to the crime, um, and in January 2013, a book came out called Buried Memories, from her, she wrote it with, uh, a news reporter, TV reporter, from that time, so, check that book out if you're interested in the story, I'm sure it details the experience better than I could detail it from her words herself goes through her past life before the incident and actually how the incident how her life before the incident gave her some insight on how to deal with the incident while she was involved in it terrible that you have a life like that but who would have known that it could have came in handy for being trapped by a crazy guy in his underground bunker that he built for you I, I can't get over how terrible the story is um, hope you enjoyed but I hope you didn't enjoy. See you guys in the next one.